right, so we're doing advanced functions today. Let's talk about our first advanced function, which is called Minkowski. Are they Exactly. Yeah. We don't think of them as advanced. Like they're easy for us. Are they still advanced? That's that's your choice. So Minkowski. What does Minkowski do? Let's go down. It's oh, been you, you don't want this anymore? It works for us. It's been on my desk for like 10 years. I'll, I'll take it. Thank you. It works for Monster Z. Minkowski. This wraps one shape around another. Write it down. It wraps one shape around another. And there's something you have to be very careful about. Yeah. This could have been helpful while we were doing the coupling and sconce. How? Because you're trying to wrap stuff around the cup. Mm, no, because it it doesn't wrap individual elements. That's too detailed. This is more generic. It will wrap like a sphere around a cube. Yeah, we'll see what that looks like. So have this note. Do like an asterisk here, or a little star, whatever you want to call it. This is super important. What's up, Gunner? Can we go the rest of our cards with this one? Um, yeah, we should probably start printing them out now, huh? Everyone has this asterisk in your notes. James, laptop shut. James, laptop shut. This takes forever. Takes, takes forever. a long time. If you can avoid using Minkowski, avoid using Minkowski because it is super computation heavy. Whenever I do Minkowski, I'll do this as a subnote. So down here, as a subnote, money sign, FN, the number of fragments or segments, however you want to say this. This usually you want to set to 20 or below because if you set it to anywhere above 50, this will take a really long time and you'll be thinking, oh, well, I'll do it 50 and then I'll do some things and then, yeah, 50 will work at the very beginning, but after you do a lot of things after that, it takes forever. Set your number of fragments really low and it'll make it really not so great, but Minkowski just takes a long, long time. Let's see it in action though. I want you guys to describe in your own notes right now how does this work? And it is kind of a hard function to understand. But say I have Minkowski. Minkowski. If I start with a cube, I'm going to do a cube size, I don't know, let's do 40 by 50 by 70. And I need a semicolon. What's up? Ah, I need to put the hat on, yes. So if I zoom to size here, I have a cube. Nothing has happened yet. It's just a normal cube, right? Well, on the second line, I'm now going to wrap something around that cube. A Minkowski takes in two objects. The first object, cube, is the base shape. The second object is the shape that you'll wrap around that. So if I do a sphere, a sphere with a radius of one, let's see what that looks like. If I zoom in here, so if I comment this line out, it has no sphere. If I uncomment that line out, it is now wrapping that sphere around it. Let me increase my segment. So if I come up here, money sign FN is equal to, uh, I'll be careful, we'll do 80 for now to make it nice and smooth. If I wrap a sphere around this, each of these edges has a sphere wrapped around it. Let's, ch let's get this down lower, it should still work, 50. Yeah, 50 is okay. Let's get to 30. Does that work? Yeah, it still works, and you can start seeing if I zoom in here. Um, it's starting to slowly get less and less detailed. But yeah, it makes rounded edges. I could do a sphere that's size 4, and it makes it a much thicker edge because that sphere is bigger. If you wanted to actually see what that sphere looked like, you can hit percent in front of this, and you can see that this is the sphere in the bottom right-hand corner. So if I zoom back out here, this sphere in the bottom left-hand corner, what it's doing is it's cutting it apart. It's cutting the top, bottom, left, and right of the sphere. So you have different parts of the sphere. And then it's taking that left side, and it's wrapping it all around the left-hand side of your first object. So I can wrap a sphere around a cylinder. And let's take a look at what that looks like. So again, this is a sphere wrapped around a cube. Let's look at a, that same sphere. Let's do percent so we can see that same sphere now wrapped around a cylinder. So the cylinder is going to have a height of, I don't know, 40 and a diameter of, let's say, 30. 
So right now, there is my cylinder, and you can see that the sphere is still down there. I'm going to now wrap that sphere around it by getting rid of that percent. Can you imagine what it's going to look like? I want you to predict in your heads, how is that going to look? It's going to look awesome. It's going to be a curvy cylinder. How is it going to be curvy, though? In your heads, predict. Right now, I have a very sharp edge around the bottom, a very sharp edge around the top. After I commented it out, it is not sharp. Notice that something else happened here too. So when I had this sphere, I had a thinner cylinder. That cylinder had a diameter of 30. When I put that sphere around it, this diameter is now 34. Actually, I think it's 38 because this is the radius by default. So if I say R equals four, yeah. So if I did D equals four, that is now, yeah, so the diameter of this new cylinder right now is 34. Why raised hand? Someone tell me why. James. Because the cylinder is diameter is 30. Okay, so I see 30 and 4 from the code. Now I'll explain it like geometrically. What's happening? Where are you? Oh yeah, you're Leroy Jenkins now. James, you want to protect? Keep going, James. Adding on that four, two on this side and two on that side. Yeah. So, Corwin, can you please give James 50 XP? That's exactly correct. So, let's try this one. I'll make it a little bit harder. I'm going to make R is equal to four. Who can tell me what the new diameter of this shape will be? What is the diameter of this shape? It's not 34. Gunner. Say yes. Shout out a number. No. Colby. <laughs> Explain to us why the diameter of this shape is 38. Because the diameter of the sphere is 8 plus 30. 38. Exactly. So let's go ahead and I'll screenshot this and add it to our notes. So do your best to to draw this, I know that it's a little bit difficult because it's kind of a hard shape. But this base shape right here, you can actually see this shape. Actually, I can probably use technology to do a, an ellipse here. Um, something that looks like that, that has an inside that's transparent, and that outside that is, yeah, sure, black. Oh, what? No, transparent. So if I grab this guy, make the inside transparent. So you can actually see that this black line now represents, and I'll make it thinner too, this black line represents the original cylinder. Uh, make it come up. That black line represents the original cylinder. So the code that I'm going to write here to the side that you are also going to copy down after you try to draw this shape is Minkowski. Everyone is copying this down in their notes with parenthesis, parenthesis, and then I'm going to start my... What's up? Are you drawing your picture? Yes. Draw this picture. You're writing down Minkowski. Everyone is copying this down. Minkowski, and then on the inside we had a cylinder and a sphere. Cylinder, and the cylinder had a height of 40 and a diameter of 30. D was equal to 30. And then you end that with a semicolon. And then the next shape that we wrapped around that was a sphere. And that sphere had a radius of 4. R is equal to 4. And then we ended the Minkowski. So we comment that and say, end Minkowski. That is the code that generates that shape. 
I'll wait for you to finish copying this down. Now that everyone has this written down, what's actually happening here is that this has a diameter right here. You go straight through here. This diameter is 30 millimeters long. Again, all of our units in Open ASCAD are always millimeters. I'm waiting for Gunner to pick up his pencil and now start writing that down. That diameter is 30. Now this right here, and this is going to be for XP, what is this length right here? And I kind of drew it a little bit too big, but this length right here, how big is that line? Quiet raised hand. How big is that line? How long is it? Cohen. Good guess. You want to try to correct that? You're really close. It is four. Give yourself 50, uh, 50 XP. That length is four because that is a radius. It's as if I had a separate sphere over here. This sphere, again, if you need to draw a sphere, you do like a, a line right here. You can do a dotted line back here. This sphere had a radius right here of four. That radius of four is being applied right here. And then I cut that sphere in half, so that left half is being applied over here. The right half is being applied over here. It's obviously way more complex than that because that's why it's Minkowski. All of these have a radius of four. That's this sphere being ripped apart and added to this cylinder. That means if I were to take a side view of this, this length from here to here, this length right here is also 4 because that would be the radius of the sphere going this direction. That sphere has been added to the cylinder. So I can tell the exact dimensions of the cylinder now. This is really, really useful because whenever you print out 3D objects, they can be really, really sharp. I mean, this one isn't so sharp. I want to... Sh yeah, like, let's feel this card. Let's pass that card around. If you had something that was thinner than that, it would be really sharp. It could physically cut you if you actually throw it at someone. Whereas if you have something that's curved, it would just knock them on the head and knock them unconscious, maybe. Sorry if that happened to you. But yeah, it could knock you unconscious. But it wouldn't cut you. You, you could. You could Minkowski module, yes. So your module could have children in it, and it Minkowski is something over the children. You have to be really careful because it is super computation heavy. <laughs> Do you remember Mr. Sindel's key holder that he made? Mr. Sindel, since I have such a big computer, couldn't I just do that and use that to bring It'll still take a while, but yeah. Let me pass around my keys. But I don't know if you guys can tell, but the very top of this has been rounded. I rounded that with the Minkowski, but this was an advanced shape. So when I Minkowski'd it, it took forever. It took roughly like three minutes, and it was just really sad, even though I had the segments down to like, I think I had it like down to 35 or something. That was rounded, so it's not a sharp edge. If it was a sharp edge, you can imagine all the teachers putting it in their pants and it like ripping their pockets or something if it was too sharp, right? You're thinking of extended use. I've had that now for a year. Think about teachers that are going to be using it for 10 years. If it's still sharp, it's still going to be cutting their jeans and stuff. You want to make it nice and rounded, right? All right, so that is Minkowski. Um, let's go ahead and play with Minkowski. Everyone open up your laptop. You get 10 minutes to play with Minkowski. See the coolest combinations. Our next function is less fun, but very, very useful because it doesn't take as much computation time, and that is offset. Offset. So, how does offset work? It basically will round things. So, it, it rounds, um, and it can be inside or the outside. Inside slash outside. Of two-dimensional shapes, 2D shapes. And I kind of realized that I should have said something for Minkowski. That is only for 3D shapes. If you do 2D shapes within Minkowski, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I'm pretty sure it gives you an error. Did anyone try doing like a circle or something and it gave you an error? No. Um, at zero, did you, I thought you tried that. Did you try doing a circle with Minkowski and it gave you an error? Oh, it let you do it? Oh, didn't let you do it? <laughs> um, no, Gunnar, we'll, we'll play with that later. But I'm pretty sure Minkowski, that is for 3D shapes. Gunnar? 
Like offset is for 2D shapes. So if I come back here to our cheat sheet, if I come down here to offset, you'll see that it takes in either an R or a delta, and then you have to set whether the chamfer is true or not. So offset. This is how you actually do the code. Offset. And then it's R or delta. R slash or R or delta. And then by default, chamfer, I believe, is set to false. Chamfer is set to false. And then you want to apply this to some 2D shape. So you could offset maybe a, a square or something. Square of uh, dimension, dimension, something, semicolon. So that's how you would do an offset. So maybe a square of size x comma y. Some, some numbers in there. That's how you apply an offset. So now you're probably asking, what is R? What is delta? What is chamfer? I will give 200 XP if anyone can guess what the definition of chamfer is. Go for it, Gunner. No. 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 Chamfer. Just shout it out if you think you have an idea. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you an idea. Okay, so chamfer basically means to basically cut off at cut a off. straight line. Oh, yeah, cut off at a straight line. That's oh, that's what you're going to say. Okay, so yeah, let's, let's let's actually analyze it. So if I don't know what offset does, I come over here and I just click on the hyperlink for offset. And it usually has some good pictures on what is happening. So this picture right here is beautiful. It tells you exactly what's going to be happening. So if you set R to be a positive value, and I guess you can't really see it here, but if I make this a little bit bigger, if I set R to a positive value, a positive X versus a negative X, positive X will add radius. You can see that you started with this red shape, and then the blue shape will be the result after you apply this offset to it. So offset with R equal to some positive value makes it bigger. Offset with some negative value makes it smaller. Notice that all of the corners that are on the outside get rounded with positive X, but all of the corners on the inside still say, stay as corners. Whereas the opposite happens with negative x. So with negative x, we have inside corners are still corners. In, or sorry, inside corners where it's like, I have to talk about the concavity, I guess, but inside corners that actually can be rounded are, are rounded. You guys see the difference here? This one wasn't rounded on the outside. This one is rounded on the inside. We're all seeing this. We're all seeing this. So let's come back over here to our notes. And we're going to say R... And how do we want to describe that? R, we'll say R makes it round. And you can do an inside or an outside. So it makes it round, and it can make the inside round or the outside round depending on if it's positive or negative. So delta. Delta kind of keeps it the same, the same shape, just bigger or smaller. So if I come back here to delta, you can see when delta is a positive value, it went from these, this red line. It is red, or is it green? Black. It went from this black line to this blue line. It just made it bigger. Whereas if delta was a negative, it went from this black line to this red line, and it made it smaller. It's just basically offset. It's like the true offset without any rounding. So if you do delta, that will make it... So it just is a bigger or smaller version of itself. So delta makes it bigger or smaller. And then finally, chamfer, you either set this to true or false. So chamfer, it's either true or false. Chamfer is either true or false. And what does that do? And you can see right here, when chamfer is true, then it cuts it off at those corners. So instead of rounding the corners, it just cuts it off. These, look at the difference between R equals X and, uh, actually it's delta equals X and chamfer is true. So check the difference between these two shapes. Right here I have this really kind of long triangle corner. If chamfer is true, it cuts it off, but it still kind of expands it. If you do the opposite, so notice that this was a sharp corner on the inside. Now that inside sharp corner has been cut off because chamfer is true. What if you make the delta zero just 
then nothing will happen. If you don't have an R or a delta, it's as if you're not applying any offset to it. Then it's going to be a very small chamfer. True or false, and it cuts off corners. So, I don't know. Cuts off corners. Ran out of space there. So the general idea for how to actually use offset is you'll offset some two-dimensional shape and then you'll do a linear extrude to make it into the third dimension. That will make it so the difference, I guess, is if you need to round just the edges instead of the top and bottom, normally you would think, oh, you could do a Minkowski where you wrap a cylinder around some other shape. And the easiest way is to actually use offset of that 2D shape and then do a linear extrude. It's much faster to do it that way because you want to try to avoid Minkowski at all costs. All right, so we're going to have about five minutes to play with offset, and then we have a puzzle. So I'll give you five minutes to now play with offset. Do offset on squares and triangles and stuff like that. Um, and then I guess I need to teach you about polygons too before I do the puzzle. Yeah, so I'm going to do offset, then I'm going to do polygons, um, polyhedra, and then we're going to have the riddle, the puzzle. All right, so what if you want to draw some custom shape? What if I want to draw a star? And you know how to draw a star. It has like pointy ends like a starfish. What if I wanted to draw a starfish? Is there any easy way of doing that? And the answer is it's, there's not really an easy way, but there is a way to draw basically any shape that you can draw with straight lines. And the answer to that is a polygon. So, and this is a bit of a review from geometry, so sorry, Julian Cohen Gunner, and that's everyone, oh, and Monse. I know what a polygon is. Oh, okay, so let's go ahead and write down polygon, and then you can define polygon for us. All right, so, Gunner, what is the definition of a polygon? Okay, so, for example, <laughs> is that a polygon? Yes. That is not a polygon. I mean, no. <laughs> it's, it's not a polygon because it has lines that go through itself. So if I were to do the outline of that, if I could try, uh, it's a really poor looking star. That is a polygon. It's a line that intersects. It's not close though. It's not a polygon. Okay, I had to make it close. You're right. Okay, Gunner, is this a polygon? No, it has a curved side. So it can't have a curved side. Um, what other things? That's basically it. So, no curves. No intersecting lines. No curves, no intersecting lines. Um, that's up to Cohen to decide. He is the game warden. All right, so how do I make a polygon? The general idea is you need an x, y coordinate. So this is very math heavy now. If we have an x, y coordinate, then we just say, hey, go from this point to that point to that point to the, that point, and then you have a polygon. So if I come back to my cheat sheet, just come back here, do command zero, zoom back out. In the 2D section, you will notice this thing called polygon. It has points and paths. It's a little bit more <laughs> difficult than that. Um, I think it's easier, instead of listing all this stuff, we are going to have to list, um, let's do this one. Um, this one is probably the easiest one to do. So let's write down polygon. I'll do this in black because it's an example. Example, so polygon. There are a ton of different ways to write the code for polygon. This is going to be one of them. So they do points as a double. OK, so if you don't have paths, so notice that this second one has paths, and this one doesn't have paths. The default is that it goes from the first point to the second point to the third point to the fourth point. If you want to go from the first point to the third point, then you have to be a little bit careful. But generally, if you just go in order, you just need to list those points in the correct order. So polygon, and then 
let's just do a triangle, I guess. We'll do three pairs of points. And it is going to have a semicolon. This is an object. Okay, let's do the first point. Notice that I'm going to have basically double brackets here. Let's go from 0, 0. That's my first point. Notice that it is there are double brackets here because I have a bracket of brackets. So from here, I'm going to go to... Um, I'm going to go 2, 0. And then from there, I'm going to go to... Um, one, two, it's going to be a weird sort of triangle. One, two. What's actually happening here, theoretically, and I have only played with Polygon for maybe half an hour, so maybe I don't have enough experience to teach this, but hopefully I'm okay. I have a point here at zero, zero. I also have a point over here at, I'm going to do one, two, that's one, that's two. I have a point over here at two, zero, and if I come up, one, two, I have a point up here at one comma two. I should have these linked by these lines. So if I do blue lines, this line right here, this line right here, this line right here, I should have this triangle if I do this polygon. And I'll actually type this in to see if that is correct. All right, everyone has this copied down. Here we go. So let's get rid of everything. Polygon. So there's my first bracket, second bracket, third bracket. Okay, this first bracket is 0, comma 0. Next bracket is going to be 2, comma 0. Next bracket is 1, comma 2. If I run that and I zoom to size, there's my triangle. And if I actually render that, you can see that it is, in fact, a two dimensional triangle. And you can even see those points too. It comes out to 2, 0. 1, 2, and then back to 0, 0. Once you get more and more complex shapes, it does get harder and harder. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> let's try it out. I want you guys to spend the next 15 minutes making a star using a polygon. So this is what you're going to do now. Everyone stand up. Everyone, Levant and say, stand up. <laughs> Grab graph paper. Graph paper, dot paper, whatever type of paper that you want. We have dot paper and graph paper. Ah. I need you to first do this on graph paper. Once you have it on graph paper, then do the code. Like so what you guys just ended up finishing was making a star. Make a star. You don't have to write this down if you don't want. This is just to remind me for next year. You guys made a star and you first did what you use graph paper. to list your points, and then turn that into code. All right, now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be making a function. So make a module that rounds. So I want the inside and the outside to be rounded. That's the key. So. So this module will make inside, and then the key part is and the outside have to be rounded. It seems easy, because it seems like if I come over to OpenS, oh, come over to our cheat sheet, if I come to um, the, where are we, the transformations, if I come off to offset, you think, oh, well, if you just do, come on, computer. If I just do r equals x and then r equals negative x, the inside is rounded, the outside is rounded, right? Should just be two of these, r equals x, r equals negative x. I will give you this answer. It is not that simple, sadly. Let's come back here. Let's say I have some polygon. There's my polygon. I did this one manually. So there's my polygon. Let's turn the axes back on so I can see what's going on. There's my polygon. I want to round this. So in front of my polygon, I could do something like offset. Offset, and then I'm going to do r is equal to, I don't know, 2. If I do that, that gives me, okay, let's set fn equal to higher. Money fn is equal to. You right, bro, you right. Okay, I have a nice and curly star. But the problem is the inside is not rounded. And you might be thinking, okay, well, let's just do offset r, oops, uh, r equals negative 2. And that will round the inside, right? Right. It doesn't. Whoa. 
How do we round the inside? If I were to get rid of this offset and just do this, yes, the inside is now rounded, but now the outside is nice and pointy. So how the heck are we going to make it? How the heck are we going to get this? Um, how are we going to make this so that it rounds, it rounds this automatically? So I will get us started right now. We're going to make a module. Our module is going to be called, I don't know, Roundy. I don't know what you want to call it. You can call it um, Marshmallow Man. I don't know. Roundy. And this Roundy will have a variable called, um, let's say, size. We'll, by default, set the size to 1. You don't have to set the default to 1. I could just do size like this. Um, but for now, I'm going to say size is equal to 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an offset r equal to size of children. That's all I need to do. And then we can, if I get rid of all this, um, let's get rid of all this stuff right now. So all I have right now is my polygon. Um, what am I forgetting to do here? Um, parentheses. Parentheses where? Oh, yeah, for children, right? So all I have is my star. I haven't applied this module at all. Gunner, sit in your seat. 10 HP. You're off task. You're supposed to be paying attention. You were looking at the 3D printer. No, you are not. Leroy Jenkins, minus 10 HP. Julian, do you want to protect? If you protect, you'll go from 50 down to 44. My health? Yeah. You want to get 150 XP and block? Okay. No one can block anymore for this class. All of our warriors are down. All right, so, so far, so uh, James, you're a warrior. You have three AP. You can't block anymore. You already blocked once a day, and that's basically all you've got. So all I've done right now is I have this polygon. This module has not been used. Gunner Hood. I might need to make that HP a preset, but I can't take away HP because I haven't made that a rule. So what I want to do here is I want to say roundy. Roundy. Now what's going to happen is I applied Roundy to that polygon. Roundy in front of the polygon will do whatever is happening in front of here for the children. So for example, if I want to do another offset, offset r equal to negative size, then it would go back to normal, but not really. We didn't get that, that inner curve. So the one thing that I will leave you with is this comment also. This happens last. This happens first. For uh, can't spell uh, uh, first. So it does this offset, then it does this offset. Why? Because that's the way that adjectives or functions work within OpenASCII. It does this, then this, then this. It goes from the bottom to the top in terms of the order. That's all I'm going to leave you with. I want you to be able to round the inside and outside of your polygon with a module. I want one module here that makes it round. There is an answer, and um, we did this in our last class at Zero. You might have a faint recollection of doing this. We did it with four lines of code inside of this module. So far, we only have two, well, not including the children. I guess five lines of code, including the children. We used a minimum of four offsets in order to make this work. If you can get it done with less, I will give you a thousand XP because that would be amazing. If you do it with four offsets, I know it's possible. We've done it before. You are now trying to figure out. You're now opening up your laptops. You're going to type these in. You don't need this comment. This comment is to help you. You're going to have a bunch of different offsets. And I will also give you another hint if we start messing up. But right now, that is a good first step.